So I did a, I did a little uh, presentation about the current state of multi-core and all that good stuff about exec SG. Um, I did not include another blurb about what ex exec SG is because I've been doing that every year since it started and I got bored of saying it, but um, can you just a tiny summary of what exec SG is? Is that the browser, Steve? No, no, Jerry, it's not the browser. It is the kernel <laughs> for the operating system. So this uh, this is the exact library. Uh, um, it's a recipe for fried chicken. No, no, it is not a recipe for fried chicken. Man, these, this is a tough crowd. Uh, <laughs> it's got exact library, utility library, and a bunch of other libraries all mushed together. Those um, morning kernel jokes. <laughs> At least no one mentioned corn yet. Uh, <laughs> and uh, multi-core is our attempt to add multi-core into the kernel, right? Because I don't know if you noticed, but most computers have more than one core or more than one CPU now. Only big computers. And uh, that's because physics sucks. <laughs> <laughs> We, we ran out of we ran out of nanos. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I've seen uh, reports uh, in the news that they they gotten the uh, interconnect so small that uh, electron can't pass through. It's like oh dear, <laughs> we reached the limit. So uh, we had to add multiple cores because we just ran out. <laughs> Unless we invent magic or something. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so every computer chip that I've seen, even I even had um, a PIC chip that was multi-core. It had two cores in it. A, a PIC is like you know, a three dollar sixteen bit thing that goes in an embedded device and it had two cores. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so uh, it, for those Maybe I should just say what a core is. You, you take the, uh, the circuitry of your CPU and you duplicate like 90% of it, and that's a core. So you take 90 some percent of the circuitry and make two of them, and maybe three of them, four of them, five of them, and then you interconnect them all. That's the part that is a duplicate. Uh, yeah, and that's really all cores are. There's no magic. <laughs> it's quite boring, actually. Um, <laughs> So what we, what I decided, I won't say we because I was given a decision. I decided to target the X5000, the E1222, and the X1000 because they're the only CPUs that have more than one core. But I wanted to, um, wanted to make sure there were as few changes to existing programs as possible. No changes to the API if we can pull it off initially. And it's backward compatible as reasonably can hope for. And um, then we we uh, we took we hired Thomas and let him loose, and, <laughs> and he implemented it, and it didn't work. And then he implemented it again, and it didn't really work. And then the third time, <laughs> I don't know what iteration we're on now, but um, uh, it's tricky. It's tricky and. It's tricky because we didn't break everything. That's why it's tricky. It's easier to do the uh, do the kind of the Apple approach, where you say, "Forget it. We're writing and we're using a brand new core, and we're going to emulate everything else, and everyone will buy new hardware, and that, the world will be a better place." Shark would like that, right? Now, certain people like that approach especially the people selling hardware. Uh, the users, not so much. But <laughs> if you have that kind of power, which, uh, which Apple seems to wield, I don't know how they do it. They did it twice. You think once was a trick. They're doing it again with ARM. And Re they're following Re they're again. To TNK to TPC. They're following again. They're buying all new stuff again. Like the, the fans. Right? Yeah. 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 I, I'm not that much of an Apple fan. I have some Apple. No, I'm not throwing away everything, starting over again. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so we, we tried this different approach.
approach. I thought maybe it would be simpler in some ways, but it turned out to be it was more complicated than it needed to be. And another problem is we couldn't really get anyone full time on it. So we're, we've got a part timer working on it. So that's never, a, never an ideal scenario. Um, so I, I guess I was going to say the X5000, I decided that's our target. Get it working on there first. And only that. And don't work on any other platform. And I don't know if you work with programmers, but they tend to try to do everything perfect and generic. And sometimes that means it will never get done. <laughs> Whereas I'm, I'm more practical in my age, and I realized, uh, no, no, get it working, then make it better. <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a kind of that kind of approach kind of lost to me now. Uh, I've, I've named the kernels kernel MC and kernel MC debug because putting the MC on the front sounded like McDonald's, so I didn't want to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> that worked. The McKernel. MC kernel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're such a geek. <laughs> and uh, given how hard I laughed, what does that mean about <laughs> So we have these two kernels. They've been out for like a year, year and a half, since last year. Got a little team together. They've been trying their best, but development's been a little too slow. So they got bored. So I, I'm trying to help out a, a lot more recently to, to help uh, kickstart things back again. And uh, there's been utilities popped out like task list and stuff that the general public doesn't know anything about it yet. It, it, it gives you a list of tasks and tells you what core it's running on. Just simple little thingies like that. So it's plotted, right? Um, requirements. Okay, let's say you want to run this right now, right? All right for you. First off, you need a new U-boot. Why do you need a new U-boot, you may ask? Well, because there's this command in U-boot like you actually you don't need a new U-boot at all, really. But U-boot will spin up all the cores for you and make sure they work. Right? Won't do anything with them, but it'll spin them up. And uh, one thing we needed was we needed to change our boot A command. It's called Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> you like these names? <laughs> Buddha, boot A, Buddha. Uh, the boot A command had to say, hey. There's more than one core, and here's the address of it, and here's what it's capable of, right? And it passes it on to a program called Amiga Boot. Amiga Boots are bootloaders, which means it, it loads up the uh, kernel and jumps into it. Uh, so it loads all the files. Uh, it, it takes that information from boot A. Now, boot A isn't part of U-Boot, it's just a command in U-Boot. In one command of many. Um, I think boot, just with no letter on the end, is for uh, Linux. Yeah, yeah, we just made boot A instead of changing it to boot L. Um, so all it does is Amiga boot takes the CPU info that was passed to it from boot A and gives it to the kernel. That's it. That's all it does. That's the only addition though had to make to make a boot. That means a new version. Then, then there's this other program that's kind of hidden called Loader. Right? And Loader takes your, your binaries from uh, the SD card, loads them into RAM. That's all it does. That's why it's called Loader. Good name, eh? <laughs> well, for reasons I do not understand, we needed this EDDR24 support for the multi core and so the loader needed a change to load that particular type of, uh, what is it called, section, or module, whatever it's called. Uh, anyway, they, we had to have that, so Thomas added it in. So now, so what happens is you boot, you hit boot A, you can do, Amiga boot goes, finds loader, takes loader, executes it, loads all the files, and it goes to the next step. Uh, so now your kernel's running. Fine, you're happy. No, no you're not. The operating system has bugs in it. 
the shelf command had a, 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 what we call a hanging forbid or disable, where it calls that forbid and it never calls permit, or calls disable and never calls enable, ever. So that, of course, hangs your core. Now, you might go, okay, well, how did this work before? Well, because there's a, there's a timeout that would kick it off. There's a workaround in there. Kick it anyway, right? Kick it back, and the system would come back running again. <coughs> yes, question? In shell or in kernel? In shell. It was watch for its own hang, and then it was kicked back. Oh, no, the, the kernel does the kicking. When was yeah. that checked in? When, when did that exist? Oh, it's a, that, that, is that, bug, exact? that bug existed in shell for yeah. decades. Yeah, is that OS3 legacy or is it an OS4? That's a good question. I didn't go back and see if it's from 3. It probably is from 3. <laughs> this, is, this is based on 3 code. It's a good question. Yeah, like why do you have So this bug appeared when the multicore started up and had to fix it. So, okay, got that. Then DOS library directly poking and peeking at a flag that shouldn't have to be you know, poking and peeking. Typical. But this, was, but this is our fault because the Amigo OS team is the only one that knows that this extra flags field exists. So if somebody took a shortcut one day, there you go. When you say you need the original. No, this is the OS4 rewrite. Oh. Yeah. So. Somebody. I'm not going to point fingers. <laughs> Are they in the room? Yeah. I'm not going to point fingers. I didn't, I didn't ask you to point. I just asked you to do it. Totally hear the question. Oh. Anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> Notice he didn't say no. Oh. Rexis library <laughs> had a bug in it. It was clobbering a private variable again. Now, Rexis lib dot library is from when Commodore stole Rex from, uh, oh, yeah. what's his name? William. William. Yeah. Yep. Pause. Pause. Yep. Yep. It was in there that long. Way back. <laughs> and it appeared as soon as we started moving stuff around for a little bit. Um, Elf library, that's our, our, another loader, basically. It needed the ADR24. As well. that's, that's not a problem. Timer device. That was it. That's a weird, weird, weird thing. So there's this thing called timer device. That's how you get time periods in Amigo OS. This is the very beginning of time. And uh, for some reason, it would poke into the kernel. It still does. Pokes into the kernel. And the kernel talks back to timer device. What is going on? Because <laughs> normally a kernel is the bottom layer, right? All your dependencies go into the kernel. This is when they go out. One place. The whole thing that goes out. What? Yeah. One place. One place. Then it interrupts service routine. It's like, what is this? It's still there today. It's still there. It's still there today. So we had to modify it. Does it still do that then? Still does it. Still does it. I have not looked into fixing it and decoupling that. I but guess that's why it's doing it. No. A call yeah. out. Sure. Out. Yeah. A call out. Yeah. So timer device and the kernel have this dance. Yeah. yeah. Very odd. The okay. oddest thing I've ever seen. Um, whatever. Workbench library. It had bugs in it. There's this run tool thing, multi-core again. Petunia, that's our um, 68K just-in-time uh, runtime emulation. Turns out it peaked in a private variable. And I don't know if I told my team to disable Petunia lately. I did not. Uh, <laughs> I have to really tell them, turn it off. <laughs> it will help slightly. Uh, <laughs> it will help slightly. So we haven't fixed that peak yet because Petunia is 100% assembly language. RPC is I, I know where the area is. <laughs> I'm like, I'm 
that, that create an assembly? Yeah. <laughs> to get in there and... <laughs> where's Dan? Where's, where's Dan? Yeah. Dan? Where's the right way? Where's the nano bin or whatever it was? Yeah, yeah he's the uh, bin. Yep, yep, fix it up. So there's a little quirk in there I haven't fixed yet. Do you have um, anybody on the executive that does no PPC assembly well? Thomas. Thomas. Of course. He knows it very well. <laughs> I always ask him questions all the time. What's this dot L mean? What's this hash thing mean? Do you frustrate her? Oh, yeah. I mean, And of course, the, the kernel itself. Uh, I just wanted to point out the last kernel built was uh, October 6th. I really tried to make it work for the show. <laughs> I tried. I tried so hard. I could not get it stable enough. I, I, could, I could actually show you how it runs on this machine for as long as it runs. <laughs> Sometimes you get a minute, Sometimes you get three seconds. Depends. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. <man. laughs> so, implementation details. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Wait, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, well, they're right there. There's five <laughs> points, as you can see. Moving on. Debugging. <laughs> yes, question. What the devil was that? <laughs> <laughs>
out pops a kernel, right? But it also builds natively. I can build it native on the Amiga OS. It's not like I have to use the kernel. I just want it done quickly. <laughs> and when I'm talking quickly, I can feed it to AWS, get it down. By the time the Amiga one is halfway done, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, then you load it on your target, however you do it. Um, that's, that's why I asked George a question last uh, session. How does he move his binaries across, right? Everybody has their trick. I've been using USB. It's sucky. So I'm thinking, maybe I should use Ethernet. And I thought, oh, but I don't have an FTP server. Thought, Wait a minute. Didn't someone write one recently? Huh. Yeah. A, it's a little pricey, but it's very good. Zeta FTP? Zeta FTP. Yeah. 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 So if I put that FTP server and uh, have it ready, I can push to it, right? Can you uh, TFC boot from loader? Can you pull the entire kernel off of uh, uh, the TFC boot thing? Yes. Yes, you're right. That, right. that, that, that might be, in hindsight, that's probably even better for, for the development cycle that I'm in. Because I've got to try, i got to remove one line of code, test it. i got to put the line back in, test it. That's what I've been doing. It's, got, it's gotten this bad. Okay. So <laughs> I put an extra semicolon on. Did it work? Oh, darn. <laughs> yeah, I TFTP the entire uh, get started. Yeah, I used TFTP boot, TFT boot from, uh, <coughs> so got lots of these really awesome ways of loading binaries <coughs> that you probably never knew of that existed. Right? He's got tons of fun. Way, great ways to load things. You can load it from a hard drive, you can load it from a car, you can load it from an EEPROM uh, Ethernet port, a USB, Bluetooth, whatever. But not if you need Oh, no, are, are you boots a little older? But it's got all the usual stuff. Yeah. But uh, that's, I'm thinking that, yeah, i got to get a, a faster cycle because the USB is annoying. Uh, then you collect your output, and 99 pretty much of the time you use serial port, but sometimes uh, you need to know something more fine grained. And then I whip out the, uh, the oscilloscope, put it on a pin. Or there's an LED in here, click, click a GPIO pin. Right? Because things get so fast that a human can't possibly uh, catch it in time. So you throw it on a pin. That's a common trick before you break out the logic analyzer and really get dirty. But <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go there. <laughs> no, no. And I don't have a logic analyzer. Anyone got a spare one? Anyone? Yeah, Anyone? Yeah, I don't well, know. that's why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, they're they're cheap, right? You got three? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then repeat. But we did we did manage to get a JTAG debugger. Um, Thomas has it right now, and he can pull to inspect cores and do all that kind of wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. But the problem I'm working on uh, at the moment is so nasty. It dies before the JTAG can get it. So, <laughs> we can't even catch it before the JTAG. And so we can't catch it mid flight. It's like, boom, it's gone right. What? What? <laughs> so that's why I was uh, nagging, um, nagging Aeon for uh, access to the hardware designer. Because <laughs> something. Out of my control is making this thing reboot. It doesn't seem to be part of the CPU, right? So I'm going to continue nagging, I think. It's, it's just, what the? <laughs> so the, these kind of problems really uh, put a hamper on uh, multi-core, <laughs> just to the least. Um, one, actually, I, I guess one good thing about it is I've been able to create that problem using uh, the second core. I got a two-core machine. I use the second core. I uh, I 
hang an interrupt or something, and I can make the machine power down. I'm like, what the? <laughs> so I can cause it. So that's a good hint, right? That's a good hint. Something interrupt B, maybe? <laughs> maybe? Yeah. Is, there, is there a multi core engine for QEMU? You could. QEMU? No, it's useless for this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's orders of magnitude slower. <laughs> well, it's fine, but the problem you've got is it crashes too fast. No, it's the hardware, though. I know. But yeah, it's not, but it's it's not the emulation. No. It's no, different no. <coughs> but you can't, wouldn't cause the crash in any emulation? No. No, this is a, this is a time. It would probably work. Yeah, it actually might work. <laughs> Good point. Uh, usually in an emulator, your bugs are hidden, and it'll just run. Yeah. Problem solved. Okay, there we go. But I don't think we have a multi-core PC engine, or, or a target platform. Really. No, not yet. Yeah. Well, not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so uh, that's that's what I've been up to. Current status, like, it runs for a while, show stop or power down or reset. Yeah, that's that's what I was just describing. But it does pop up. It does run cores. And it just dives off a cliff. <laughs> now uh, along the way, I have fixed uh, several several uh, problems that would have made things worse. I didn't find the problem, which is what I was hoping for. Because uh, once you find the power down reset problem, whatever this is, uh, we have a way better chance to know the JTAG and this thing, da 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 da, right? But uh, yeah, Thomas kind of threw up his hands, and I'm, I'm like, I don't know either, man. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we got to nail this one. We do know it's not a hardware problem. Linux is fine. I combed the, the Linux source code looking for a comment that says, by the way, the core will reset if you don't do this. <laughs> like, what? Because <laughs> sometimes that, that's what you find in open source, is a, a guy will leave behind a little note, by the way, you're going to kill yourself if you don't do this. <laughs> I have enjoyed chat GPT. <laughs> Everybody, chat GPT. <laughs> I have not asked it. <laughs> so I have an X5000. <laughs> well, first you have to put all the source code in. <laughs> oh, mercy. So uh, I wanted to also mention, so that's kind of bad news. Good news. Performance monitor. We just had a commit. And uh, from... I, I don't know how I'm saying that name. Atheus? Atheus. 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 Thank you. Uh, he has been busy again. He's a performance monitor expert fellow. He loves that stuff. Um, and he, he's got it working on those three platforms again, or more. <laughs> and uh, the next step after that, because I don't know if you know how usually works is you have to make a, an API to Amiga land, or resource we usually call it, to give access to the peripherals inside the chip, right? And so he did that little resource, performance monitor resource. And uh, now, after you have that, you can go to Gprop and other tools and uh, use that resource to get the timing you want and the counters and all the other stuff. So that's the very next step. Now that came in like last week just before the show. So I don't know what's happened since. He's got GProf working again or not. Uh, I don't know who's familiar with GProf around here. Anybody else? Yeah. It's a GNU for profiler. And so you, you, you compile your code with GProf support, and you run it, and it'll give you a count of like how many times this function was entered, how much time it spent in the function, and give you a huge report and then you can fine tune things, right? So that's a great way to find your hotspots in your code. Great way to find hotspots. Um, I guess my only uh, criticism of it is when your program gets too big, it doesn't really help you anymore. It's too much output. 
So you need something a bit better, right? But anyway, it's a great way for medium long-leash programs, but uh, not fantastic for large things, really big things. No, it's just not good enough. Go another step. <laughs> so that's good news. Uh, oh, and of course, the, the, the team, I wanted to mention the team grew again. So we have all these people and none of them can figure out what this problem is. <laughs> no, I'm just picking up. <laughs> Only Thomas and I have dug deep into it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's quite a few people uh, and they all, have, they all bring something to the team, I must say. Some, some of them commentary, some of them code, some of them wisdom, some of them testing. Yeah, or they'll work on this piece or that piece. And uh, it's, uh, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. So uh, I want to maybe open it to questions before I boot up the multi-core and show you how well it runs or doesn't. <laughs> Any uh, questions? I've got a question on the plate, man. Chris from our team is in work on the G-Prop as well. Maybe we can bring the teams together. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess there's another uh, another guy's working on profilers. Yeah, call up uh, Mateus, because he, he's got it running. And, uh, oh, uh, I, I guess I, I'll have to throw it back to the, uh, the boss again. When are we going to release that, boss? <laughs> Trevor? We're going to talk about it later. We're going to talk about it later. There you go. <laughs> the pressure is on, because the performance resource, like I said, is in the kernel. You can't just take a file and give it to somebody, right? So we have to release the kernel as a package. So we'll have to figure out how to get that out. Yeah. But it, it, would you release just the kernel, or do you have to release the entire thing structure? No, just the kernel. We don't have to release anything else. Um, but you could. We but could. Yeah, yeah, we could. We you could. need all the dependencies. No, just the kernel. You do. The kernel's the, the dependency. Right. Everything else is dependent. Yes. Yes. Well, no, it's an elf library. That's what I was about to say. Depending on what the last public kernel was, you may need to release elf library. Oh, elf library. Because there were changes a little while back. No, he says an elf output if you want. The elf library is a different problem set. It's hard. During anyways. The entire problem set. Because you don't need that that elf unless you're running multi-core kernel, which I'm not going to give you. Oh, okay. So uh, don't worry about it. Yeah. But <laughs> on the other hand, there's been some massive changes to elf library. Quite a few nice ones. Massive changes and a lot of great fixes and a lot of shared object fixes, the constructor, destructor fixes. Mm -hmm. That is certain Amiga Labs guys might be interested in. <laughs> talk to the boss. Yeah. So I'll have to talk to the boss. And uh, <laughs> so, so, in theory, could you release the Elf library and kernel like right now? Could you do it? I, I wouldn't want to release There's the, another question there. the kernel for the X5000 the way it is because we put some experimental stuff in there. Well, you today, can go back to right now. I would take those experimental features, they're just compile time features. Yeah. So I compile, take a look, the yeah. dash D, and uh, compile it new. Give it, a, give it a little test, like a functional test maybe a week, and then shoo, out you go. Because we've been running that forever. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I, I wouldn't have any problem uh, taking those experimental features out, shipping all the kernels to all the platforms, throwing the ELF library, and then people can move forward. Yeah, yeah that, uh, everyone would love that. Yeah. What, what are the platforms? All of them. All of them? All the Amiga one. ones. Yeah. OK, <coughs> 1,000. Yep. Okay. Well, I, I think the question might be, for these changes, ELF library, not for multi-core, but the ELF library improvements would be everybody. Everybody. The yep. kernel we're talking about, though, that wouldn't hit SAM, would it? Yep. Because, it, well, it wouldn't have the performance user requirement. But it, it would have an updated it kernel. It would have an updated kernel with, the, with all sorts of bug fixes but, that we had yeah. along the way. Yeah. Yeah. So it would get a little, yeah. little bit of fixing, too. Yeah. Not as much as the other bug. <coughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, the, the chat is asking for uh, ELF, so that people can use spotless. Yep. Let them use spotless. Let them use spotless. Let the people use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the people go. Come on, Trevor. Come on. We have a reminder <laughs> to apologize and ask for permission. 
Not with the boss is actually in um, the same room. <laughs> Wait, is Trevor here? I, I have managed to stay in, in the good category for a while. I don't want to go to the bad category. <laughs> in the kick layout. Yeah. So it's yeah, before the kernel runs. Before the kernel runs. Oh, before the kernel runs. Yeah, before. Yeah, so this uh, is the new uh, right. Right. Okay. So you or the loop 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 loop. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's the trick. Yeah. That's the trick. It's before the kernel, yeah. so that you always have a base that you know runs. But then do you yeah. put all of the final edition kickstart files in the, the final edition direct subdirectory? 
And then you have I, the I'm out beta directory with all the beta it, it, kickstart. I'm not that clean. I don't put all the files in subdirectory. Well, so but how do you keep the, I should. the final edition separated from the beta from the... I'm lazy. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you keep them from mixing? He doesn't. I don't. I'm lazy. <laughs> so basically, his final edition has all the other updated components except yeah. for the current. Sometimes. Yeah, well, there's but a few. Yeah, like, there, like I'll put a different DOS in there. I'll put a different yeah. ELF in there. In that directory. In the directory. Sitting. In the subdirectory. And I'll just point at them. Right? Okay, so you only yeah. have the things that change yeah. in the subdirectories. Yes, yes. Now, I can only do this with kick layout files. Right. With the workbench, I don't touch anything. So, that could be good and bad because usually it's bad because I'll have some annoying tester like Tom Cruise over here that would complain because <laughs> you, you don't even have the right version of anything. I'm getting this problem. I said, works for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always say. Works for me. Works for me. <laughs> now, we know, now we know why. Now you know why. I'm lazy. <laughs> but I seriously got to fix this. <laughs> Do you have called pop core, but is it kernel you expect to <coughs> Yes. Oh yeah, it's the multi-core. <laughs> yeah. So I got two versions of multi-core. I got one that's uh, with debug and one without. The one without is more exciting. Of course. <laughs> more pop core. <laughs> Here we go. More exciting. Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's hilarious, Steve? This is what runs for like an hour. <laughs> Well, there, it works fine, right? Let's ship it. <laughs> well, Can you run oh, tests? Oh, oh, there it goes. Uh oh, uh oh, I was just about to tap something. <laughs> That's how much time <laughs> I got. <laughs> there it goes, that, yeah. Is that what you're referring to as the reboot problem? It was a good run. Is that the reboot problem yeah. you're talking about? Yeah, it goes back to you. Well, from a hardware perspective, that takes ages to get to that point. So there's, a, there's clearly an event somewhere. The, this thing has uh, trace facilities, right? <laughs> it's long and complicated. I will talk to you. I will talk to you later about trace facilities because maybe you know something I don't, and I, I would appreciate to know this. Because, <laughs> like I said, we, we slap a JTAG on there and it can't catch it. Well, no, because this, the, yeah. the underlying interface is, is basically I swear to see it's really slow. So if you're trying to are you trying to catch like an instruction string or something? I don't know what I'm catching. They have, they have no idea what's going on. They don't know why it crashed. It, and it's the uh, MCC will like literally power for sure. Yeah. I, I don't see reboots. I see. Yeah. I see it's very or, interesting. I see a message, a message out from the, M, the MMC, whatever the MCC, and then it turns off. Like, yeah. I'm turning off yeah. now. Sometimes yeah. I can power off the machine just by opening clock. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, with the message. It's kind of like, it powers <laughs> off. Okay. And I'm like, how can a CPU power off the whole machine? Um, it can send a uh, uh, ACPI power event to microcontroller. Yeah. Yeah, like we should talk. Which is very <laughs> so, but is there anywhere in the kernel where that that piece of code is? Oh yeah, yeah. We we looked, we looked. Don't worry. <laughs> I would assume so. But no, there is, there is, there's there's a line in there that that turns off the machine. It's a little GPIO thing. We just go click, turns off the machine, right? So the very first thought, of course, Thomas, that Thomas that had. Comment it out. I mean, that's like, this, this was like eight months ago. Like, <laughs> you're just catching up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, but like, is there some, you know, random jump that it's making to that line? Exactly. Right. Exactly. You're just catching up. It's okay. <laughs> we, we went through all of that garbage. Um, Wait, okay, you yeah. moved the line? Yeah, yeah. Right. Change it. Put in a, a random delay. Something. Just right. random delay, random delay. I love that approach. Just take your shotgun. Do it. <laughs> There's always the printf statement. Well, that's, not, that's the same as delay. No, I'll load up the debug one. It may or may not run longer. I've got three minutes. I'm on. Oh wow! Sometimes you can get minutes. Save <laughs> up. <laughs> and you wonder why I don't really care what the workbench files are. <laughs> it's more like watching popcorn. Just stare at it it's done. Now the, the load is extremely slower. Because oh, no, debug. Oh, debug. I have a debug level 5 normally. 
I never go lower than five usually, because um, it's got the good juicy stuff in it for a debug output. Right? I even I even got into some code where uh, where there was uh, swear words. So I know I'm getting close. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I like that when you go through someone else's code, go and they're like, beeping, beeping, ding dong, beeping, work. It's like, they come on before they're reading it, it's like, ah. <laughs> Checked in in 2006. <laughs> Wait, it just rebooted. Oh, see, so it didn't even get to the word. I know, it didn't, it just rebooted. Right. And the, you know what's really fun, though? Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. That's another weird problem. <laughs> Six key? Because I like to press buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Even slowly. No, actually, it, it stops the countdown in case I slip. It's a feature. I have a reason. <laughs> you know how many times I've slipped and picked the wrong one? Well, how many times do you get distracted, reboot the machine, and then turn back and it's already? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You turn your head. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, I'm not rebooting. I don't think there's a way to actually pause it to stop it. See, work this time. Work this time. This is the same way. Wait, did you do debug? Yeah, yeah. this is multi core debug. There oh, it shit. No, I didn't get much time. <laughs> <laughs> You're not, that machine does not run as well as mine. Sometimes. But then, uh, this is like, I don't know if they Wait, even released okay. this one. Can you guys compare what you, you guys have, have in the machine? 61. 61, yeah, I did that. Have you what's compared what's in everybody's machines to see? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's the kernel. No, it means like drivers. Right. What what boards do you have in there? Like, but for it, example, it is it just like everybody. some combination? But yeah, but why is it three minutes for him and you haven't gotten a second? Because I, I build a different system partition. <coughs> everything. So it's literally just one. <coughs> like, like, ah, yeah, yeah. And it runs about three minutes. See, now I got a boat. I got a final edition. And you've got you've got a uh, Emmy Doc, which is time device. Yeah, you know, right. I mean, that's yeah. you're you're actually getting the uh, full work. Bench and mine right. plays the uh, the audio jingle too, right? And all that stuff. Yeah. So I got all sorts of firing up mean things, things going on. Yeah. But I wanted the mean things in case I could get a crash, because I would kill for a crash report that shows that reset. <laughs> that's too early. I would Are kill. Just. <laughs> Because that's the problem. We don't get like the, the we don't catch an exception. We got exception catchers all over the place waiting for exception. Can't catch it. So it's clear or not. No, it just bypasses everything. Dunk. <laughs> anyway, this is the latest U boot. Um, it's interesting. I don't know. I fixed up a few things on the menus. And, you Did know, you do anything with the Linux made, boot? Made it prettier. Which one? The Linus boot. Did you do anything with that, Steve? Uh, no, the I didn't menu. touch it. The menu. No, yeah. I didn't touch that. Boot options, like these little menu things. Uh, the, only, the last thing I got to do is just uh, set the environment variables for the tasks for these buttons. Like when you do boot for mass storage, it should do a USB reset and then boot A for whatever it is. Yeah. Right. So I just got to put that in the background. Well, let's. But that's boring. So I didn't do it yet. <laughs> yeah, I had to do it myself. Terrible. Yeah, the bot, actually, I, I'll fix that tomorrow. <laughs> the boss said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> see, you can see this what is done tomorrow. This is the, the, <laughs> uh, the yeah, right. GUI that uh, was invented. Of course, you get the command line. Good day. Obviously, we're written by Canadian. Good day. I should put E H. I could change that to put E H. <laughs> I just thought it was spelled with A. It's like good day. How long is it going to go? I got it! I got it! I got it. Uh, <laughs> you could go set the tool type on music. The, what? Oh, you don't see that? <laughs> Mr. Solly, you could set the tool type on the clock to show the second hand of the get go, but I don't know. Oh! Hey, I'll swear. So, 
Um, I'm noticing that the rendering on the block is not terribly smooth. Yeah. Well, I'm using an image capture device. It's not. That's the issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, I paid ten dollars for this <laughs> from Amazon. <laughs> what resolution does it do? It's like 1080 something. Yeah. It, it doesn't do much of anything. It's just enough to get a good feel. But it's fuzzy and not great. Yeah. yeah. That's that's with me being lazy again. I mean, what what else do you need but but a CLI? I mean. <laughs> and a large font. Uh, I don't even know how to change the font. <laughs> yeah, nope, but, uh, any more uh, questions, queries? Uh, well, hey, can you guys hear me? No. No. Shut up. No. <laughs> <laughs> I go and speak. I get the boy up now. Hey, it's it's Ryan. Can you hear me? Now, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. So, S Steve, uh, by, by, by the time this crashes, um, uh, we, we, we've already set up the serial, uh, the serial subsystem, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm, I'm just, I've never looked at this because um, I don't have like uh, better access to like the uh, Mega OS 4 name. If I did, I wouldn't have a clue what I was doing. I'm not going to pretend. But I'm just curious, like, why you couldn't, in every function of the exec, of uh, 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 exec SP, why you couldn't just print, hey, this is the function that we're in, this is the function, whatever function we're in, print something that's serial, and say, okay, and then find out where, in which function it is that actually crashed. Yeah, that, that's been done. It, it, it doesn't crash in any particular function. That's fine. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately. Question. Just so you know, I, I did plug it into ChatGPT, and it says all you have to do is review your code. Insult or no? The insult. Review your code, stupid human. Yeah. <laughs> it actually was a little better than that. But uh, actually, <coughs> it's been a, it's been an interesting exercise because I've been reviewing data sheets. And Making sure initialize chip initialization was done everywhere correctly. Did and you look at that part of Linux kernel? Yeah, yeah, Linux kernel too. Yeah, yeah. Well, the initialization of Linux kernel. Yeah. Because how, how it initializes the chip—that's the magic sauce, right? Yeah. Well, that, that's kind of what you get from Freescale slash NXP. You get reference manuals, and they give you a kernel that runs, and those things all together should be enough for you to do whatever product you're doing, right? That's the theory. So the kernel is the source code is actually part of the documentation. That, I don't know, that's how all chips work now. They, you don't, you can never expect to get a chip running with just paper. No, that's not how they work anymore. They're so complicated. They give you running code along with it. That's the way it is now in the world. So, yeah. Can't just go for specs. Maybe in the old days, in 6502, you could just get a spec. Just make a new program for just the paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chips are so complex now, there's no chance of that. Oh. Well, that's a bug of a problem. I'm glad it's not mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, does this happen with Linux as well? No. No, Linux does not have this problem. No. No, it's unique. Because to cool. our implementation of the Last thing we're doing, there's something we're doing that really, really hates. <laughs> so it's Steve's fault. Is what I'm yeah, it's it's Steve's fault. So we all, we all agree? It's Steve's fault? Yeah. Do we all agree? Do yeah. we have consensus? No. Hands up, Steve's fault. No. Yeah. We don't. Work. Consensus. <laughs> <laughs> work happens on the 20 and the 40? I don't know. I don't have a 40. I'm not Thomas that rich. rich. Thomas is using a 40. <laughs> so yes. Thomas got the 40. Uh, it's not running, I don't think. Is it? That's what he uses. I thought I thought he uses a twenty. No, he says he's developed on a twenty. Oh, okay. I shows what I know. <laughs> <coughs> I, I, it wouldn't matter how many cores you have. <laughs> you still run. Uh, you still run the same problem. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is. Uh, I had a, I really had a hunch it was interrupts, and I went through that interrupt setup stuff. Pretty fine tuned. 
on one, one issue, but Have it you was tested on the X1000 to see if there's a different behavior? No, um, they can't. Don't bother to write for the X1000. Did, did, we, <laughs> did we not see that slide? <laughs> see, this not, is, this they is don't what care happens. about the X1000 users. This is called the drive sundown in the insanity see, this, mode. This is what happens. <laughs> you, you always get somebody in the room goes, well, just try it on. Yeah, well, to get it to just try it on, it took three months. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but you were working on this for eight. We have one person going like this to the other machine, <laughs> and it may not work either. Now you've got two non-working machines. <laughs> you just wasted three months. There. So, no, <laughs> that, it, we know it's not hardware, so uh, why not just keep digging until you find it, right? That's, uh, that's, what, that, that's the approach we're taking. It, it will come. It will come. Now that I've got uh, LD on it, uh, I'll trade you. I'll trade you the uh, pausing problem for uh, this. Um, on the twelve twenty two. Yeah, because I, you know, I'll be honest with you. The, the first theory that I had was, all right, go take a look. No, no seriously, go go take a look at the um, actual method for uh, communication. Via the local bus, what instructions are writing, what registers, come up with the union of that, then take the instructions that theoretically should be involved, set those up as triggers for your core traces so that it only captures those instructions when it happens along with the time of the A field. Not, oh, yeah, okay. So, I, I understand you, what you're saying. Going That's scary. It, it, <laughs> just, capture, just capture those instructions being issued. Yeah. The theory you should the the, the last the, the last yeah. one. And we need to set up the trigger such that when it's writing, if, if the only method that you're doing is actually to write that particular pin, we could set the masks up in such a way to only capture on that one event. And that would prove that that's what's actually happening. As yeah. opposed to well, you're assuming it's coming out. What if it's something on the board monitor? The battery sort of something I don't know because I don't know the board design. I don't know the trigger. Right? I need to. I need to take. I need to see. I don't know what the MMC is. Yeah, yeah. So I need to look at a product sheet to begin with. But, but yeah, that, I mean, that would be basically the. the but it, uh, yeah, the assumption is that it is coming from the processor because assumption. it's either coming from the processor or somebody yeah. has set up something on the board incorrectly. Yeah. That seems unlikely because you guys aren't doing board setup in the car, are you? No, it's it's done. Well, you are doing that, right? Okay. And, so then Linux doesn't have that. So I So my. The first area to eliminate would be that there's there's actually some the rogue instruction that's getting sent at some point for some particular reason that's triggering the event. Once you eliminate that, then you can go up with other theories. But that's an easy one to do if you have the ability to knock out trace rates. So that's uh, if you don't have an easy ability to knock out trace rates, I'll 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 dumb this down for the audience. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're gonna take Ryan's idea of outputting a character at the function level. Kind of. Take it down a notch. And put in the instruction uh, catches. We're going to catch instructions. There you go. That's right. We're going to dumb it. We're going to take it right down there. Damn right. Very good. Way yeah. down there. Yeah. That's what Let's I'm hearing. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do right it. Now. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, that would seem to be the one logical thing to do. The other thing also. That's a good idea. Yeah. I, and now, the other thing also is we, I don't know what type of debugging, de debugging interfaces that the MMC has. Well, it may be possible to the data sheet, shall we? <laughs> no, because it's probably so darn slow that there probably is an I squared C interface to it, and we yeah. can actually monitor what it's receiving. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Maybe you're right. I don't know. I have no idea. How those, I don't know. I, that was so, how those when I was going through the manual. Uh, I noticed uh, Thomas had triggered the debug facilities on the chip too at one point, but it was it's currently disabled. So I could tell there was something going on there. I haven't asked him about it. What he was up to, but uh, I, I went and looked at the debug facilities. And, Holy cow! This thing's got a lot of crazy stuff in it. it it's does. got a whole big chunk. It, it's got its own interrupt. It's got it's like a little computer inside of a computer. Yeah, but those traces are always capturing if you don't have an actual setup, and it's useless because 
by the, by the time you pull out whatever that tiny snapshot is in there, mm -hmm. you pass the error. So like ages ago. It's like a ring buffer that's this big. That's right. That's right. Yeah, there's only so many, there's only so many <laughs> entries in there. There's only so many yeah, entries in there. Yeah, it's not great, so that's why the trigger setup is so critical. You need that trigger, yeah. So you can yeah. set the trigger in the like debug scope. section of the chip to pick only the ones you want. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and you yeah. can even go further than that because there's usually general task yeah. bits. So we can select the opcode, we can select condition flags, we can select tons of stuff, and then it'll only capture on that point. And you can even set it up so that it'll, it'll capture a subset of what you want, and then there's another subset of things where you capture it, and then it freezes. So it no longer captures after that. And that way you can kind of whittle things down. There's all sorts of cool things. So the only thing I would say, LB, is all you have to do is change the V to I. <laughs> <laughs> I, was just, I was just thinking that myself. Uh, Steve, knows what, Steve knows what I'm talking about. Right? He's done. Uh, oh, He's sitting in front of the computer with the fire. <laughs> all right, Mr. Solid. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
So it's the, been paid. Are we talking so the board is paid for? Yeah. So as far as so we have to, <laughs> as far as the OS, there's no there's no share of it. Why did you say four? No, this is all X five thousand. But you that, add. That, I think that means that we have to buy Trevor lunch, okay? Because <laughs> we he's did. broke. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody give that man something. Because <laughs> come on. That's what we call fine. <laughs> There's a small gap in the time. <laughs> it's called cash flow. <laughs> See, because, yeah, they, like Kevin's mentioning, there's this thing called cash flow. Okay, that money's gone. Now, how long before the boards are being sold and the money starts to come back? <laughs> That's a lot of lunches. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's got coding work to do. Yeah, he's got coding work. I got so much. 